Hey everyone, this is Caesar from Gamer Graphics. Uh, today I'm going to show everyone how I created my 3D Transformers logo. I'm using a com uh, combination of uh, SolidWorks 2006 and HyperShot, and that's it. I don't don't really didn't have to use Photoshop. I can use Photoshop if I want to add uh, more effects to the materials, um, but I chose not to as it came out pretty good. So. Basically, in SolidWorks, which is a 3D program, you need to create your dimensions, your 2D layout that you're going to extrude. So this is basically my Decepticon shape, and it's pretty simple, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I have dimensions on there just to add, um, you know, so that everything's symmetrical and, and, and matches up. It's really not necessary. You could pretty much, you know, some things are blue, which means they're unconstrained. Some of that has to do with I just flipped it because I didn't feel like redrawing it. Um, now that I'm done, I just exit, and you can see that the logo is extruded because I used a, an extrude command. So this was pretty plain, and I, I really didn't care for how plain it was. So um, what I did was I added some chamfers and fillets to it to kind of give it some, you know, some uh, some more feeling to it I guess and I thought that came out pretty decent so then I decided I was going to add uh, some 3d text in just for some more you know cool effects I guess not really necessary but and I think it's pretty self-explanatory it's a Decepticon logo but I don't know you can do 3d text in SolidWorks and I I wanted to add it in there I guess so now that I'm done uh, I could add materials into SolidWorks here or I could add change colors in here and maybe screenshot this and send it out um, but I don't really like to do that because HyperShot takes care of all of that for me and you're probably wondering what HyperShot is well I'm going to show you right now okay so in HyperShot Basically, the thing I love about HyperShot is I can open up my native model from uh, SolidWorks. I don't have to export it and do all kinds of crap. I can basically take my native model and open it up. And it brings it in completely 100% accurate. Um, and then I just take it and uh, do whatever I want to it. I can add materials, which is why I like it. it, it when you add your materials to it, depending what material you add to the to the model, it will um that depends on the re, you know the reflect the reflectiveness of the uh, of the part itself so i'm going to zoom out a little bit okay so now i have my decepticon logo it looks a little greeny that's because it's uh processing a little bit so you got to give it a second so now the environment's pretty plain um my friend, one of my members, uh, Bioslayer, he's uh, an admin over at GamerGraphics.com, gave me some high-res uh, HDRIs, uh, background images basically, that I can use to uh, bring into HyperShot to enhance my, my graphics. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, now here's... Here's one of the HD HDRIs that he sent me, and it looks pretty simple. You know, I mean, there's not a whole a whole lot, but it, it's actually pretty cool because this, these scenes allow me to bring this in and make it look like this is really on the street in some you know foreign town. I don't know what town this is, but it really doesn't matter. And what I can do. is I can take this and I can add a material to it. Let's just say I wanted to add chrome. I could make it chrome. And you can see how everything starts reflecting. The buildings start reflecting off of the uh, the item that I put on the, on the uh, you know, my 3D object. Like I didn't have to do anything except put a material on it, put a background image in, and the program takes care of the rest. Now, I do have some s shadow issues right here. You can kind of see those. 
And sometimes that has to do with snapping it to the ground. It gets too close and it, it really messes up my shadows. I think that that'll be all right. But anyways, when what you can do now is you can just render it. You can make it whatever size you want, you know, wallpaper size or whatnot. And this is probably 1280 by 720 or something like that. And you can see how fast it renders. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Some of the textured materials like leather and plastic and stuff like that, some of those will take a long time. I've had them take all, not, all night. This one is only going to take, you know, 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever. But... Um, that's pretty much all I do to create my uh, my 3D objects. Most of my time is spent creating the object itself, and I don't really spend too much time rendering it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, if you'd like a 3D object like this or, or maybe something different, stop by GamerGraphics.com and uh, shoot us a request.